Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth Martinez and I'm coming to you from The Harbinger. The crisis in northern Iraq and northern Syria has escalated with the beheading of two American journalists and the capturing of up to 40,000 members of the Yazidi minority, Iraq's oldest minority, who fled to Mount Sinjar to escape ISIS's slaughter. ISIS is known for their medieval-like brutality and violence and so the question is where did they come from? Now, it's important to note the two different sects of Islam, the Sunni and the Shiites. These two groups play a major role in Middle Eastern politics, more specifically in Iraq. So, back in 2003, Saddam Hussein was the president of Iraq. President Bush accused him of funding terrorist organizations, more specifically Al-Qaeda, who was behind the September 11 attacks, and having nuclear weapons. So, we intervened that year. We wanted to free the Iraqi people, disarm their weapons of mass destruction, and stop their alleged funding of terrorism. So, we take down Saddam, who had largely oppressed the Shia majority, and instate a transitional government. At the time, the people weren't all for the United States being there, so terrorist organizations who wanted to state their own type of government rose up, such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS, who is Al-Qaeda's successor, who are Sunni extremist groups to fight the United States. This time is commonly known as the Iraqi insurgency, and by some scholars is considered the Iraqi civil war. Flash forward, and in 2006, al-Maliki takes over and establishes his first government after Saddam Hussein. Flash forward even more, and the United States leaves Iraq in 2011, after having spent $25 billion building the Iraqi army. It is important to note that al-Maliki largely kept the Sunnis out of the Iraqi government, which has caused a lot of political instability in Iraq. This again allowed ISIS, a Sunni extremist group, to recruit members because their goal is to establish an Islamic state made of solely Muslims in northern Iraq, where a government that suppresses them exists. In essence, this was a perfect storm for ISIS to rise to power. Now, ISIS, commonly referred to as ISIL, stand for the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, or the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. And the rise to power in Syria was at the Arab Spring, and Syrian civil war began, and they became one of the religiously motivating fighting groups against Assad, with the hopes of extending their Islamic State to incorporate part of Syria, which they did. So far, this video is to explain how it is that ISIS came to power. In the next video, I'll be discussing what it is that the United States is currently doing to contain ISIS and what our other options are.